Hey guys, this is Killerob speaking and today we are back in automation with the light campaign V3 opt-in beta which at this point is rather falling apart for me in this game. Uh, so many bugs that are trying to kill us financially. We uh, just ran into a problem where I destroyed the, um, the actual current engine of which one was it the Dubravka yes fortunately it was later on in the first facelift of that one so it wasn't that critical anymore had to well we had to stop selling for five years now, <laughs> which was terrible and then the Draguna the original Draguna just stopped producing for whatever reason but I did save the uh, the save game before it entered production and uh, one where it was in a broken state uh, not that far apart so we should be able to fix that uh, still the 29th today when I'm recording this so we haven't been back in office don't know where this episode is coming out I think I just scheduled episode 6 for the 1st of January so this would be which one is this is episode 9 maybe uh, anyway, uh, today we are uh, designing the Draguna R2. Oh yes, uh, we just started with the first one. We need to complete this trim. We need some something sporty with our beautiful, beautiful engine we built last uh, last time we designed the Draguna. This was fantastic. So uh, let's get back into that. Select this trim and continue designing. So far, we have created our C2 muscle. That's uh, our coupe uh, and muscle category. One, oh, well, that's sport. Sport muscle is 172. Let's uh, use that one instead. And that is fantastic based on our super nice Boxer 6. Sounds awesome, too. And uh, now we have to create the pony and then the additional extra, which will be the convertible because that is a thing for this body type. We've already made the engine, so I can just delete this one out and select the pony variant from the list. There we have it, 1984 version. A lot of things that Orwell predicted in 1984 already are the case, but he didn't predict this one. This is just too good to be true. Oh, do we want to go for an advanced automatic four gear for this one? Mm, oh, uh, se several people's liking this, yes. Uh, not sure though, not sure. It is a uh, much bigger cost, especially in engineering time, 33 months. And I mean, we're a shitbox manufacturer, so no, no, we're not doing that. Let's go with a four gear <laughs> instead. That should be really quick. We have high familiarity for that too. Another thing we don't need is the viscous diff. Let's get rid of it. Just 1% extra uh, extra wheel spin. Ooh, the pony buyers don't like this one yet. Um, medium compound, gotta save some money somewhere. And we go down to 185s. And yeah, 16 inch. Mm. Maybe not. No, 17 is fine for that. We we reduced size too, so. And much smaller front rotors are now required. Putting up the cooling airflow to 70, that will suit them better and add two seats. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I have to uh, drop that down to standard and basic eight track. And now, well, yeah, that makes the big difference. Now affordability is at 40% and the score is 148.6. And also here we are going to put in ABS for the first time. That will be one of the major uh, ma major times that we are spending on this thing. That is 43 months in one vector. Same setup for the suspension. It's simple enough. Standard springs, gas monotube. And do we need some retuning? I think the answer to that was yes we do because uh, together drivability and comfort are higher than sportiness. So let's hold the car before we start tuning the suspension so we have a good look at it. We are currently sitting at 148.6. Unfortunately that didn't make much of a difference. 
It's a softer setup now, overall. Um, ju just the nuance, by the way. But, hmm. Just upped it by a few points. It doesn't make it. Uh, can't really get there with this shitty interior. Like, the base stats are too low to really boost this by having a better suspension. But I'm quite happy with this setup. I mean, our production will make it dirt cheap, so that's all good. And now we're going for the convertible. Uh, base it on the muscle. So you clone that one. Probably going to make it four-seater? We shall see, because otherwise... Uh, with this engine... Hmm... We could also make it... A, like a four-seater. And then use the pony engine. Because that's more quiet. <laughs> convertible isn't even on the list. It's the only convertible sport, so that's what we're going to aim for. And first get the seating arrangement proper. If we are going for convertible sport, we need two to four seats, so either we go with four. Convertible sport really likes this. Convertible premium, okay. Now, now we're talking. So we can go into two categories if we want to. And if we want to go for more budget categories, then certainly the four gear manual is the better choice. Can make it automatic. That's uh, convertible premium. Do they still like it then? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, no, they still still do like it. But I think I want to switch the engine to uh, the uh, pony variant because it's quieter and stuff. I mean, in a convertible, <laughs> you can't can't have that drone for more than half an hour. Where half an hour is generous, feels like half an hour after 30 seconds. That would be a good reason to pick the M84 version, because that one sounds proper, like a proper engine, not like a fart in a can, like this one. Well, yes, uh, comfort is going up, drivability is going up, but sportiness is dropping by four points. And prestige is dropping. Mm. Oh, well, okay. Big difference in fuel economy. Three liters less per 100k. Uh, maybe we should switch back to the proper engine. It is the more premium engine after all. So, yep, let's pick that one. Oh my, oh my. Yes, this car is way heavier than our proper muscle car version. Has more seats, of course. And also, is a convertible, which adds a lot of weight, just for the strengthening requirements of the chassis. And, yeah, it's underbraked. What do we do about that? Up the end of the uh, rotor size? It gets really expensive. I guess this is how far we can go, really. Hmm. It kind of hurts. This is 400 bucks just for the front brakes. 235 for the rear. Solid disc all around. Ooh. Convertible Sport. They do like the premium interior. That is good news. Gives us a bit more comfort as well. That's what we need there. And it's way cheaper. So we can get a bit more into the budget categories of the convertibles. This one, for instance. But we're also going for the premium 8 track. That should do. Variable hydraulic, ABS as well. Standard, yeah, yeah, that's all good. Uh, the dampers in the rear need to be adjusted for the extra weight. And it looks like we're done here. Look at that. Beautiful. Very nice. As soon as we uh, produce this as a, at a bargain, even the convertible sport budget category will be all over this thing. Let's have a go at the test track with this one. How fast is it? Oh, and this is the convertible version. It's super heavy. Well, 238, that's, that's not very fast. I assume our uh, standard muscle car version will be quite a bit faster. Let's check it out real quick. So 238 versus, let's see, come on, calculate, calculate faster and stop. 230, well, that's a respectable time. It is almost 300 kilos lighter. Well, uh, I don't know if the almost is correct. It is about 300 kilos lighter. And our lineup is complete. Beautiful. This covers a lot of categories. 
Now we need to uh, select the defunct <laughs> factories and hope that they are going to work this time. We could give them an update as well so that they uh, get out of their weird state earlier. And Gazmia will be opening up in 1990, which is very soon. So after this engineering time, that will certainly be a thing. And uh, let's check how long does this take? Ah, it's just 13 months. Oh well, oh well. Oh, this is ridiculously cheap to produce. Holy shit, only 800 bucks, 900 bucks for the convertible. That is without material costs, of course. Ooh, engineering time is a little, a little high. Yeah, all the pressure, please. All the funding, please. What is taking so long? It's the entertainment. Oh, no, uh, well, it's not entertainment. Entertainment is in interior. This is the driver assist. But we're getting there. So it's five years worth of engineering time. And I think I'm going to roll with this one. Can't adjust it much. Tooling's pretty high. Still a 50, yeah, that should be fine. The same goes for the engine. They still have their factory. Let's upgrade it as well. And still very good tooling. Now, well, this one is fast. This one is really fast. There's basically no upgrade. Uh, that makes me makes me wonder if we should use this opportunity to uh, go MPFI. I think that would be the correct choice, but it might not be the thematic choice. Because uh, shitboxes have SPFI. <laughs> if they are not having carbs, then they have SPFI. But no, I'm not going to tinker with the engines now. That is a major change, so I'm just going to remove the pressure. I can even reduce the funding, although 12 million is nothing. Can up the reliability a bit, the tooling a bit more. Don't want to go overboard here because that that's a little cheaty. And then a process a little bit and that's all good. And another profitable project. Uh, if, if it gets done and if it doesn't suddenly st stop production. Like the last one, time we tried this one. Are we ready to sign off? The answer is yes. 6016, yeah. Very well aligned. And there we go. Signed it off. They are coming. But first, we need to see... Uh, wait a second. No, they are, they are already producing. This is all good. Yeah, 43,000 cars a month. And we are building a bit of stock here for this one. Let me, uh, let me just pause the production and re reset it. There will, of course, be UI later on for properly doing this. Um, well, of course, I'm, I'm not so sure. But uh, we might have to remove the news posts from, from this and move the news here, maybe? Because it's just not used yet. And then that will also come in the... Uh, probably first in a light campaign before, I'm not sure. But this would be very handy, like if it uh, told you, like, that this uh, new super competitor has been released and now your cars are shit, or something along those lines. Or uh, rather that, uh, well, uh, it's good sir, your your factory has, has burnt down. <laughs> no, no, the, we won't have uh, events such as this, like, uh, which, which game was it? Uh, Motor City Oldtimer, yes. In that one, factories were burning down all the time. That was was a mess. It was not a fun game mechanic. So now I'm just reactivating them to set it to 10% production share each. And let's see if they are way overproducing now. No, they aren't. But we produce plenty of cars. At least that starts them out at, again, a bit of a higher share. Which is more profitable. Oh. Now it was set down to zero again. Well, just for these two. Oh, I think I know what happens there. I think what's going on is that it's um, that it's seeing like, oh, we, we need to reduce the overall factory output. And then it just subtracts equally from everything. And then these two, which have a lower production share naturally, are just dropping down to zero. And it goes from there. Hmm, that could be it. One thing I have been missing out on, 
is we, we've almost had five years worth of production of our uh, Kalina, but no facelift. So it's facelift time. And in the engine project, we do our quick update. From 77 to 86, that's a big jump. First, we go through the engine. So this is our 1.7 liter variant. And basically no changes are necessary. From what I can tell, can up the compression by one step. And I don't necessarily want to up the cam profile. Yeah, they have us slightly. But we could put some into quality now that we have engineered this one. Now this is our cheap version. Also one extra compression and two extra quality. Where do we end up? Ah, uh, maybe another compression here. Very, very nice fuel efficiency, 19.8%. A good change on the sporty version of it. Could uh, run it one step leaner and two steps up in compression. Much more efficient while being just as sporty as before or even slightly better and uh, well also more reliable so we add a new facelift to it activate all the trims and delete out the engine so this one gets the small one this one gets the large one and this one gets the sporty one there we go now we just need to update the actual cars oh what's going on here that is not looking good Low sportiness penalty, pretty massive. But this one is focused and what's wrong with those guys? Why is it all of a sudden so crap? Oh, I see why, uh, oh, I suspect why, yes. They have selected the luxury cassette <laughs> because their old option wasn't available anymore. Let's go to basic eight track and there we are. Yes, that it was, all right. I think we are going to give them ABS while leaving the hydraulic power steering and not going for variable. That is just way too fancy. On the other hand, I mean, ABS takes quite a while to engineer. So probably, yeah, probably we shouldn't give them ABS. It is 1986 after all. We don't necessarily have to be there already. Now taking another look at the markets. This is looking so much better. How much one selection can fuck up the whole car? That was a nice illustration. Thank you very much. Not much to update for the family fam slash family premium version of it. Hmm. And our stats suck. That is compared to family, the best family competitors. Uh, yeah, drivability a little bit lower and sportiness non-existent, but it's for for most of them sportiness is zero so that's fine um right around the right mark of prestige but very low in comfort it's not great but it serves its purpose of extending our range towards the upper end of the family segments especially once we make it dirt cheap and last but not least the coupe version a bit of optimization for the for the new engine does help now we get a 10.5 seconds from 0 to 100 very sporty oh and this is with terminal oversteer that bodes well okay um that is easily fixed now we're running on tiny brakes tiny solid disc two rotors um or two, pi two pistons i mean so hmm. is is that a good choice I believe it is. Uh, yeah, it's pretty low material cost because they they can be so tiny. We don't run into any brake fade because this car is so damn slow. The brakes, <laughs> until you're up to speed again where you could brake again, that it just takes too long. So the brakes will uh, never really fade. Unless, of course, you're going downhill. But then again, this car doesn't have much, um, much weight it can carry. So that's not an issue. The 900... 33 kilos only. Yeah, this this one will be reasonably agile. Scores 160 in fun too. And um, basic 8 track currently in there. Below $100. And the material cost... Ooh. Oh yes. 
The basic interior is even better for this one. 171 for fun, but fun premium suffers slightly. Let's drop it down to basic, yes. Oh, this would benefit so much from the variable hydraulic. That's unfortunate, really. Can we do this? This alone is is crazy long engineering time. But maybe the yeah, yeah let's let's choose it for this one and see how much overlap there is to the uh, currently engineered hydraulic. We might be able to cut away some time there because they are so similar. Now we just need to tame this one and we should be golden. Yeah, it's looking re Ooh, that's right on the edge. 190. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a solid performer. I take it. But of course, the question is, how fast is it around the test track? <laughs> Let's see. Especially compared to our muscle car. So, uh, 235 was our muscle car. And this one is... Ah! Oh! Sounds good! It does it in 241... Oh, this is... This is not much slower than our pony car. So the designs are all done for the Kalina. Now I just uh, put them in the factories and... Oh, uh, yes. Do we want to upgrade the factories? I don't believe we want to. Currently, we are not suffering from underproduction. Oh, even that is costing so much. So much to retool. 454 million just to update the tooling. Once this here is implemented, that will be a, a big, big benefit because I think currently it updates all the engineering, including the uh, major tooling. And you can switch those on and off in this UI that is to come. You will most likely always want to update the minor tooling, which is like the, the dies and so because they, the tolerances increase over time. And they're just worn down but the presses don't really need an update until they are like 15 years old or something so um yeah that covers the full car production but the dies they don't cost quite that much oh well, one thing i should check out is how is our value looking right now Ooh, oh this is not too great i mean 10 per oh no but over time it goes up to the labor costs so 10.8 dollars per production unit currently and it looks like this is going to be a free year project and uh, we do have oh this is in the entertainment which is driver assist so that's 20 months that is a major major vector so i think we have to take away oh yeah yeah, you can see that. Oh, no, wait a second. This one is taking time. All right, with this setup, let's just check what happens if I take away the variable hydraulic and see how much this changes. Currently, we are at 36.0. So I'll just switch it over to hydraulic. Oh, it costs us so much score. Yeah, that's quite a difference, isn't it? From 36 down to 28. Point six. Definitely not worth it to put uh, the variable hydraulic in there. Let's go for 29. Allows us to set reliability to 55 while having tooling at a massive 70. And now the engines doing the same thing. I'm going to up the reliability quite significantly and then uh, this engineering project is still cheap. Yes. Right, 23 months. Um, yeah, no, no, 20, 21 months. It's not an issue. And we are ready for sign off. This is looking good. Very juicy, juicy numbers. All green. Five years, 6.7 billion. And we sign it off. There we go. Shift of plus seven, yep. And it is in engineering. Oh, wow. Our current project, though just got a second wind like look at this continuous growth this means it's growing by like six or seven percent each year <laughs> the economy yeah you can see that i mean we just made a profit of almost 200 million in a month 
But this should be enough for today. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.